So when we talk of the self and a course in miracles, they have to, you have to make two very, very specific distinctions between the word self. So those of you that are not English, just bear with me. Um, self meaning yourself. And the Course in Miracles talks about the self in capital letters for the first time um, in the workbook in Lesson 93. The first time you see the word self capitalized is in Lesson 93. And in, in, in verse 9, it says, um, you are what God created, okay? You are what God created or what you made. So there's, there's two opposing points of views. So you, either you are what God created or what you've made. One self is true, and that is capitalized, self capital word, capital S. The other is not there. Okay, and that's a very, in, very, very important realization. Now, non-dualistic teachings, the, the, the Advita, the Vedantas, um, the Buddhist teachings, the Tao teachings, all speak of, of a non-dualistic essence. And or when we, they talk of the ego, they talk of the separated self, the self which is separated or seen apart from everything else or a scene of most importantly apart from god apart from christ um, now our self is the christ in each one of us this your, your true self is what jesus fully realized when he made the very bold statement which got everybody upset when he said i my father are one as the father is in me, so I am in my father. So, you know, in other words, when he, when he owned up to the fact that he was love personified, therefore the son of God, one with God, a holy son of God. And what the course in miracles does is it brings us slowly and gradually into the realization that first it's, it's Jesus talking to us, Secondly, it's Jesus talking with us. And then finally, it's Jesus talking through us. And the minute Jesus speaks through us and we, we own up to and claim to willingly be teachers for God, when, the, when, when, when we unite with Christ, we unite with Christ through an invitation. We invite Christ within us. Now, that's a bit of a paradox because since we exist in that which is God, we therefore also exist in Christ. And that is why the idea of salvation is only an idea to a fallen, separate self mind. Because it's not that Christ is in us as much as we are in Christ. And that is the most amazing teaching because if you fully realize that you've never left God, that you've never left Christ, that you are in Christ, Imagine the power of you in Christ, or the power of Christ since you are in Christ, as opposed to the fragmented idea that Christ can be in you. Because the minute we think Christ is in us, then the mind immediately says, well, I'm special, so Christ is in me, but it may not be in you. However, if we see ourselves in Christ, then the realization is that if I am in Christ, everyone else must be too, since Christ is omnipresent and omniscient, omnipotent. Therefore, there is nowhere that Christ is not. And as we start to become aware of the awareness, and I'll, I'll do the next exercise shortly about, you know, what is the awareness? It is the most incredible gift that we need to own up to is that we should not be looking for salvation. We are already saved. What we need to be looking for is the experience, the recognition through experience that we are already saved. I'll say that again. We need to get back into the experience or move towards the experience where we realize we are already saved through the experience, experiential awareness of what already saved means. 
And what that already saved means is you look upon the world and you experience the world, regardless of what's going on, in the presence of Christ, because you are in Christ. And therefore, within, from within Christ, looking upon the world, you look upon all your brothers and sisters with love. And therefore, you look upon the world as a, simply a, a movie on the screen. The sound is off. You have no idea what the characters are doing, but you love everything and everything you look upon with the same unconditional love. Can you, can you conceive of a state where nothing in this world upsets you at all no one dying no one just nothing everything to you becomes an unconditional acceptance of what is because the minute you're in resistance to anything out there you have any form of resistant thought no matter how small you you move out of the christ awareness and it, so from, from from chapter 93 lesson 93 sorry lesson 93 not chapter 93 um, you, start to, you start to see the word capitalized self. In lesson 94, it says, I am as God created me. I am his son eternally. Now, if we're raised in a traditional Christian household or even non, and we start to say things like, I am God's son, anyone without the awareness of what we're saying will immediately see this as blasphemous or an insult or how can you What's wrong with this person? It must be ego. And the course clearly teaches us that it's only ego that sees us as separate selves and therefore not one with that which created us. So we cannot be separated from that which creates us. Thoughts do not leave the mind from which they come. And therefore we are simply, in our experience, thoughts in form, thought forms. Okay. So you are as God created you. You are his son eternally. And that is something worth celebrating. And, and we as course students and teachers for God need to celebrate and own up to the fact that we are God's son. And in owning that, it changes your view on the world. Because if you become willingly present in that thought, because remember, it's everything's concept until it becomes experience. And experience becomes knowing at that last stage when God takes us home. Just imagine, just for us, use your imagination to, to imagine what it must be like to always be fully present and aware that you are in Christ. It, the world, no matter what's going on, lockdown or not, would just seem irrelevant because you would be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and therefore it's filled with God's peace and joy. Lesson in lesson 95 is, is a lesson I want to draw special attention to, and a lesson I would like you to mark in your books as the most important lesson in salvation. And let's talk about salvation for a second. What does salvation mean? What do we need to be saved from? You know, we learn this concept of salvation atonement from a young age if we if we're raised in a religious home what is it that we need to be saved from and we can make up a whole list of of things that we think we need to be saved from we need to be saved from evil we need to be saved from pain or suffering and no matter what you look at you're going to be naming the effects that you believe you need to be saved from what in essence we really need to be saved from is the causation the cause of our suffering the cause of the reasons we put up defenses and try and protect ourselves from the world. And the cause is that fallen self mind, the egoic self mind, which sees itself as separate and therefore tries to validate, validate the, the reasons for its separate existence. And therefore it wants to see itself as special. And yet it denies that its idea of separateness is going to result in death. And we, so we avoid that, deny that, and put everything in place to try and prolong our life as long as possible and put up every possible defense we can imagine in order to prolong or keep this illusionary life alive. So lesson 95 says, I am one self. And if you, if you look, if you read the lesson, you'll see that 
self is not incorrectly spelt. It's spelt with a capital S, united with my creator. And it says, today's idea accurately describes you as God created you. Not as you imagined yourself, not as you'd hoped to be, but as God created you. You are one within yourself and one with him. Yours is the unity of all creation. Your perfect unity makes change in you impossible. It makes change in you impossible. Okay. Your perfect unity makes change in you impossible. You do not accept this and you fail to realize it must be so. Only because you believe that you have changed yourself already. And so how have you changed yourself already? Well, first of all, I'm a body, male, female, and then you, you've ascribed all sorts of qualities to this body in terms of its roles, father, mother, son, daughter, um, husband, uh, teacher, uh, student. We've ascribed all these ideas, so we've already decided what we are. And what we all try and do is we try and hang on to this experience of the separate self, yet because we have this deep inner calling to return to God, we also want to experience God and experience Christ's consciousness and the love of Christ, the unconditional love of God in this world, while remaining and seeing ourselves as separate. So if I was to ask you the question, and you can just wave at me if you, if you agree, you know, how many of you are prepared to when you leave this earth in this final time, in other words, when your body physically dies, to never remember you were ever a body, but to experience the unconditional love and joy of God? Imagine that when you die, you will have no memory to ever having lived physically before. And therefore, you also let go of any memory of anybody that is that you know so everybody that you think you know will just never you would not even know you knew them it's just gone and that is what happens in my and the only way i can explain when we fully realize the christ within and we become one in christ one in god because the minute you become one in christ one in god the idea of a separate you is not possible. So there's no Renata, there's no Krista, there's no Manuela, there's no Brenda, there's no John, there's no Luigi. We simply become one with God and forget that we've ever been separated from God. And how many people you think on this earth are ready to die physically, return to God, experience the love and joy and peace which is God, and forget they've ever existed. It seems like it's almost a sacrifice, doesn't it? People, we're afraid because we think we're sacrificing something. We're sacrificing illusion. The only thing God asks us to sacrifice is illusion, is the idea of suffering, the idea of a separate self. Because once you united in God, atoned with God, united in Christ, in God, through the experience of God's grace, the Holy Spirit, there will be no more memory of a separate self. 